Hello and welcome back to Aqua Chick Cupcake Force. I am your host D, and I've got another set of Reddit stories to talk about today. So here's the prompt: Managers of Reddit, what is a Karen experience like? What was the worst experience? Story one happened before I became a manager, but once while I was serving at Steak and Straight, customer had a coupon for burger, fries, and a shake for X amount of dollars. Can't remember the price anymore. Anyway, on the coupon it specifically stated that cheese on the burger was 39 cents upcharge, although it did have a picture of the burger with cheese on it. Lady threw a fit in the dining room that I was treating her unfairly, it was false advertising, etc. etc. I told her I agree, it's false advertising with the picture, but the text was specifically states the upcharge and unfortunately I can't do anything about it. The lady at the next table overheard everything and literally got up and put 50 cents on the table to cover it and said something to the effect of, I'll pay for your damn cheese if you just shut up. This pissed the cheese lady off even more. My manager obviously sensed the issue and came out, took the cheese upcharge off the bill. Like WTF, your manager should have just left it there at that point. I mean, I don't know why it didn't come out the first time if she was already giving you hell for it, but whatever. Commenter. Love how that other lady, I I think I'll call her Laren, is like the anti-Karen. She probably has daughters. Lauren, the anti-Karen, I like it. Lauren is the new anti-Karen of Reddit and it will forever be that way. Story two, I once had a customer tell me F you after arguing with me over five cents. He apparently rounded the three down, which made me owe him five cents. After about two minutes of arguing, he stormed off. Edit, for the record, the cash register told me exactly how much change to give. Story three, work at a vacuum repair shop. People will pay attention to their vacuum cleaners as much as you think. I can't tell you how many times someone comes to pick up their vacuum and says, oh, this one isn't mine, or mine didn't have scratches down the side. I can tell you it is and it came with all those scratches on the side. After the first two times it happened to me, we started taking pictures of the unit with serial numbers and customer info. Send them home with the serial number, require them to bring it back for pickup. Despite the evidence, I've had a lady close to tears because we didn't have her vacuum. Even with the pictures we had of it at drop-off, her information, the matching serial number. Sure, it's a big conspiracy. We just love taking in vacuums and switching all the information around because it's fun. People need to pay more attention. I mean, yeah, but like who is staring at their vacuum that close? I mean, I know you're working on one. Story four. Is there a male version of Karen? Because I had a client like this once. Fairly wealthy, very entitled, just an ass to work with. We were the contractors doing an extensive remodel on his home and one of the light fixtures his designer chose was this expensive custom order chandelier with no return policy. We made sure he signed off on the spec sheet with a picture of the fixture and no return policy highlighted. When the chandelier was delivered he insisted he'd never seen it before and definitely hadn't approved it. He kept insisting on this even after we showed him his signature on the order, even suggesting we forged it to cover a mistake on our part. Yeah, because I'm gonna go out of my way to make my life more difficult like that. Story 5. Not a manager, but I used to work part-time at a bakery inside of a grocery store. I dealt with my fair share of errands during this time. Just to paint the picture of how it would work, we had a binder with the laminated copies of 100 different designs the decorators did regularly. A customer would look through it, pick a design they wanted, and fill me in on the details of when they wanted it by, what size, what flavor, if any color changes were necessary, etc. Our decorators will come in at 7 a.m., stay for however long it took to complete their order, so usually they were gone by early to mid-afternoon. The bakery closed along with the store at 9 p.m. One day, maybe around 8.15 or 8.20, a woman comes in and says she needs a cake. I figure she's referring to the cake sitting in our cooler, which we keep at the ready in case anybody just wants something quick and simple. So I motion to the cooler and I ask her if she sees anything she likes. Apparently, I'm GD, brilliant comedian, because she starts laughing and goes, no, sweetie, I need a wedding cake. All right, no big deal. I grab an order form and take down her information and then I ask what day she needs it for. Tonight. Well, that was your problem right there. You know good and well. Mind you, the store is closing in 40 minutes. So even if I could decorate a cake, I wouldn't be able to help her. I tell her that there's no decorators present at the moment, but I could make sure it was ready for her the first thing in the morning. She's clearly upset by this, but says that'd be fine. I continue taking her order and ask her what size she'd like. Our bakery was not an upscale joint, and our prices reflect that. Just about everything comes in frozen, so for our cakes, they come in a variety of predetermined sizes. She pulls out her phone and thrusts it in my face saying, whatever this is. On the screen is a very beautiful cake. Smooth, white frosting, seven to eight tiers, decorations made in fondant and blown sugar. Before I even continue taking the order and dash her hopes when she sees the finished product, I tell her that just wouldn't be possible. 
I didn't mean to offend our decorators, but I told her the truth. Most of them were exceptionally gifted home bakers who didn't have formal training in terms of culinary program or decorating school. I then politely refer her to a more upscale bakery that I knew of that's more equipped to help her than we were. Then the dreaded six words came. Can I speak to your manager? At this point, I had been working at the bakery for a little over a year, so I was capable enough to close the department on my own. As such, I was the only one there. I told her this, but offered to leave a note with the customer's name and number so my manager could call her tomorrow. Fine, then let me talk to a store manager. There were anywhere between one to three store managers who oversaw the entire grocery store and all its departments on staff a night. So I go to our phone and page a store manager over to the bakery department. The whole time we're waiting, she's staring daggers into me. A manager I was fairly friendly with came to the counter in a few minutes and asked what the problem was. I briefed her before she went to talk to the customer. The second we got over there, the customer starts spewing lies about me, how I was rude and refusing to help her. I tried to defend myself, but the manager just told me to keep doing my closing work out back. Ten minutes later, she comes back, shaking her head and rubbing her temples. That bee was crazy! Customer service industry is a blast. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's sarcasm. It's holding on a effing blast. Story six. I was the only person on shift, which made me the de facto manager. Five minutes before closing, a woman comes in and is so angry that we don't have any decaf. She demands to speak to the manager. I tell her that's me because I'm the only one here and the coffee pots are clean for the night because it's five minutes to close. No, I'm sorry, I can't make another pot just for her. There's another place around the corner. She screams at me, tells me she's going to find a real manager and get my ass ass fired. Throws half a cup of cappuccino machine sludge at me and starts to look like she's gonna jump the counter. I'm holding a hammer under the counter thinking, don't do it, don't do it. I pick up the phone like I'm gonna call the cops. She leaves, I lock the door. She comes back and runs face first into the glass door like a bird. The OP went on to tell more of the story in the comments. She fell at that point. I thought, okay, I may be looking at a middle class white lady's first time trying serious drugs. And I did regretfully have to call the cops to get her so that I could go home without her trying to eat my face or something. She screamed the B word, the C word, the W word at me the whole time I waited for them. They started talking to her, she yelled at them, and then calmed the F down. Once she realized what was happening, they walked her away from the store. After that, I have no idea because I jogged home pretty quick. Story 7. The staff did not know it at the time, but our ketchup dispenser was empty. A boy aged 10-ish was just smashing down on the handle trying to get ketchup, but none was being dispensed. A staff member noticed the kid smashing the ketchup dispenser, so I went out to see what was going on. Oh, the ketchup is empty. I'll get a new bag from the kitchen. Give me two minutes, I'll be right back with some new ketchup. I Remove the empty container, take it back to the kitchen, clean the dispenser, place it in a new bag, take it out to the condiment stand, and get met by Karen. Why did you take the ketchup away from my son? Me. The ketchup was empty, so I replaced the bag. Why did you take the ketchup away? Go get your manager! Uh, okay, one minute. I walked about two meters, turn around, and introduced myself as the manager. Why did you take the ketchup away from my son? Ma'am, please lower your voice. The ketchup was empty. I explained to your son that I needed to take it back to the kitchen and refill it. No, you didn't. I was standing here the whole time. You took the ketchup away from my son. Ma'am, please lower your voice. You are not with your son. He was here alone trying to get ketchup, which was empty. Don't you tell me what to do. Do you know who you're dealing with? Nope, ma'am. Please get your belongings and leave this establishment. Cue the screaming and yelling. I will not leave this establishment. I am going to burn this place down. Other patrons are visibly upset at what they're witnessing. Police are called. That's my washing machine, so if you can hear that thumping, my be guys. Karen gives a statement. Police questioned me. I give a statement. Karen told the police that I struck her son, pushed him out of the way, and moved the ketchup to an area in which her son couldn't get access to the ketchup. I disputed the claim and offered to provide video evidence with sound of what actually happened. Police watched the video once, thank me, and walk out to the eating area. Ma'am, does your son have someone who can look after him? His father's at work right now. Okay, you're being placed under arrest for making threats and false police report. More yelling, threats, and now tears. In in the end, she was charged with making false police report, but not the threats, and received a lifetime ban from not just our restaurant, but the entire mall our restaurant was located in. I felt kind of bad, not for the Karen, but for her son. He had to live with that. Yeah, I can only imagine what these Karens are like when they actually get home. 
you're probably a freaking handful. Hate that. And why are you freaking out so bad about ketchup to the point that you're lying to police officers? What the hell's wrong with you? Story eight. Not a manager, but eating at a cheap, greasy spoon kind of diner that has been around since the 50s. All the meat is frozen. Pretty much nothing but the coffee slash eggs made fresh. You know what you're getting when you come into this place. A couple comes in with their two young boys. I'd estimate six or seven for either. Mom makes a minor scene about not wanting a booth, wanting a table. There's an entire wall of booths and multiple tables but she specifically wants the one in the middle of the room that needs to be bust since the people that were using it just left. She makes a minor scene about having to wait for the one bus boy handling the entire front of house to come take care of it. When the manager went and got him to take care of it immediately, at this point I'm not paying too much attention but they're sitting literally right next to me. They order appetizers, steak, shakes for the kids, etc. Their waitress is handling several other tables at the same time like a third of the floor and serves some coffee and sliced pie to an elderly couple that come in after the family. Karen throws an absolute hissing shit fit because we were here first. How come they are getting their orders first? Manager comes back out and explains in the most placid tones possible that multiple fried goods and a steak take time to cook, but hot coffee is available all day and sliced pie is in the display case up front, so there's no prep time. Karen calms down but fumes. Doesn't allow the boys to get their food buffet option till her slash dad's food comes to the table. Once the adult food arrives, Karen just starts tucking in. Both boys are just tall enough to see over the edge of the buffet, but not nearly enough to reach tongs or reasonably serve themselves. A waitress from another section sees them struggling and comes over to help, asking what they want on their plates. Karen flies to her feet and makes a big scene, this time about, how dare you tell my kids what they can and cannot eat? Who do you think you are handling their food? Hugh manager coming out again, following demands to complain directly. Waitress is an older woman, we're talking white hair and is nearly in tears thinking that she has done something terrible. Manager asks her to go chill in the back a bit while she smooths things over with Karen. Karen demands balloons. They had them in a special birthday thing for the kids. They got balloons. Karen calms down. Husband and kids are pretty quiet. Kids seem visibly embarrassed. Husband is acting like this is completely normal. So this is what you're showing your kids, Karen? Embarrassing. Husband's state comes out last. He's unenthusiastic about it and Karen calls for the manager a fourth time to chew her out over the steak being overdone, dry, and etc. They send it back and demand another, then a third. Let me reiterate, this is a place you go for like greasy burgers, fries, fish and chips, etc. Steak is on the menu, but realistic expectations and reason means you're not expecting high quality, you're getting what you pay for. Managers kept quiet, kept apologizing for their suboptimal experience, but beyond filling minor low-cost demands, i.e. the balloons, didn't offer up much. When Karen basically shouted that they would never be coming back. The manager was like, sorry to hear that. Have a nice night. Absolute pro at Grey Rocket. Is that what this is called? When you hold your temper against the Karen? Because I genuinely feel like a lot of Karens of the world could be dispelled if people just fought them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't condone violence. That's a lie. I watch UFC. But I, I genuinely think if some of these ladies got popped in the mouth, the world would be a better place. So we should start a campaign called Papa Karen in the Mouth. <laughs> Story nine. Best of the best interactions I ever had. Karen griped about not wanting to pay the price for the services formed on her computer, which was exactly the price quoted when she dropped it off, which she had signed for. She demanded to speak to the service manager. I called him from the back. Service manager listened to her spiel as how she should get a lower price because irrelevant pea brains reason. Service manager made eye contact with me over her shoulder. I did not react. He said no, price quoted was the price that would be charged. She said that that was unacceptable and she would be complaining to the owner who was a good friend. Service manager observed that she was evidently not that good a friend since that me was the person she was originally speaking with when she asked for the service manager. Her face was glorious and made the whole thing worthwhile. Commenter. I love when people claim to know the owner and that should be enough. For starters, if you are so close with the owner, just call them. Have them call the store. I'd be happy to comply. I'm sure they'd be happy that I'm not giving away things to anyone claiming to know them. The best for me was a man talking about how he knew Joe. Joe is his friend and we should respect that and how poor Joe would be upset. Not knowing anyone named Joe, I didn't see how it was relevant. How do you not know the CEO? The customer demanded. Oh, you mean that guy in the line behind you? Not at all named Joe? Left without any of his stuff. Story 10. I'm not in 
retail anymore, but I was managing a popular mid-range handbag store. Think typical Karen bag, about 200 to 400. Anyway, most customers were fantastic. This one woman was this Shrek-looking, large red-headed lady who stomped in and demanded that we repair her 20-year-old bag for free. And if we couldn't do that, she demanded that we exchange this old, ratty, smelly 20-year-old bag for a brand new one for her. Recently, policy changes have resulted in new prices for the service, but free repairs had about a one-year warranty on a new bag, not a 20-year-old one. I tell her as such. I was pretty young to have had the role I did, so she, dissatisfied with my answer, asked to speak to the manager. I told her I'm the manager, and she began turning as red as her hair. She screamed and yelled about how she'll call corporate and never shop here again. Well, that sounds like a real loss, losing a customer that is too cheap to repair a 20-year-old bag and hasn't brought new from us in just as long. I give her my best shit-eating grin and say, I'm so sorry, that's just the policy. She demands corporate number. I give her the customer service line that you can find on Google. Unbeknownst to her, she huffs away, forgetting her keys on the counter. She's halfway out, she remembers, turns around, red as a beat, huffs in my smiling face, snatches the keys off the counter. It was hilarious. She came back months later, worked with a different person on the team, and didn't even look my way. Story 11. Oh hell yeah, buckle up. Like, the way it starts. I worked as a manager at a chain barbecue restaurant. We will call it Popular Charlie's. There was this lady who we called Nacho Lady. I'll get into why. She was that kind of overweight, holistic living, anti-vax, essential oil, military wife. My two-year-old daughter, who I talk to like a coherent adult, is going to change the world type lady. With all the care and aesthetics to match, we all dreaded her when she came in. We call her Nacho Lady because whenever she comes by, she orders our nachos at our takeout area. No big deal. But she would want everything on the side, which again, no big deal in most situations because I understand that nachos get soggy, especially to go. But what some people don't like slash understand is seeing the actual portions for everything. Two ounces of anything really isn't that much. That goes for the cheese, chili, beans, nacho sauce, all the works. Even though it is all proportioned equally, the customer doesn't like what they see and that's where the backlash happened with nacho lady in the karen moments starts happening she didn't like the actual proportions and wanted no demanded more but refused to pay for it our takeout specialists were good at standing up for themselves and the rules of course she didn't accept it so she had to speak to a manager myself or two others depending on the day she would also order two kids meals pork sandwiches and fries again no big deal but she was very particular about this one as well the pork had to be dry, no barbecue sauce, and in a separate container, kids buns toasters, which we usually don't do, the fries had to be dropped as soon as she walks in the door so they are crispy and fresh when she takes them all the way home. Because of her extreme specifications, it got to the point where only a manager was allowed to take her order and only a manager could review the order with her. This was always the most nerve-wracking part because she would sit down at our waiting table in the takeout area and open every single box and expect everything, which we would typically do in the first place but the way she went about it was very Karen. This is when all the issues would happen. Fries were never hot and fresh and crispy enough. Sent back to get new ones. Not enough for the portion pork for the kids sandwich. Demanded more. Not enough cheese and shredded cheese. Demanded more. Not enough tortilla chips. You know the rest. The list goes on and top it all off she somehow got a hold of a S ton of free kids meals. Coupons that were blank meaning no manager signature dates or any sort of validation that she got it. Legit. A coupon is no big deal but a typical coupon can only be used one at a time with one transaction but Karen being a Karen she demanded we use two out of the giant sacks so she gets her kids meals for free this got to the point where things had to be ran by the GM even if it means calling him on his day off he was a bit of a bitch and always allowed it but she started costing us money it wasn't feasible for her to keep coming back and having her as a customer because nine and a half times out of ten we would end up having to send stuff back to the kitchen which would get wasted my other manager billy joe was a fierce bee that never let anyone walk over her and she was awesome she finally stepped in when that moment came we all huddled in the office and watched the security cameras as billy joe ripped her new one that was an unforgettable day i left and got out of the restaurant industry and management because of how toxic that field can be but i do love that i have a karen story i don't love that do i have a karen story i mean i've talked to quite a few oh there was that lady 
Okay, so I work call center customer service, and there was this one lady who called in. She was just annoying from start to finish, but she's like, I'm a lawyer. You can't do such and such a thing because I said you can't. If I want my money this way, you have to do it this way. And I'm like, lady, we don't have an agreement with your company to send direct deposit or whatever. She's like, well, I want to talk to a manager. Yeah, because that's going to fucking help. Your company didn't put it in the contract agreement. How am I supposed to fix that? Like, I, I probably have a million more and maybe I'll come up with another one. This is not the only Karen video we're going to do, but I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. Hope you all had a wonderful day. Please stick around and subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you all next time. Bye!